Hello, hello, welcome to another episode of Color Commentary, colorful conversations by colorful people about Christianity, culture, and race. I'm your Mark. I'm your Marcus. I'm your Marcus. This is I'm your man, this Steve is, Harvey. <laughs> this, is, this is your Marcus. Not their Marcus. <laughs> but someone else's Marcus. Not someone else's wicked, your wicked Marcus. Rewind. Hi. Welcome to Color Commentary. I'm your host, Marcus Lloyd. And with me as always in the studio. Antoine Malone. What's up, Antoine? I am your Antoine Malone. That's right. No, no. What's up, man? Hey, man. Good to see you. I know we we still in our... No, we're good. That's all right. We we, we still... We we, we thought we'd give some overtime. Yeah. we're Look, and and people haven't even seen the episode that has this yet. That's right. So I'm messing the whole thing up right now. That's that's okay. We are (laughs) in the midst of recording, as you know, these series on Christianity in the Public Square, but uh, we had... But when we... uh, decided to do this um this series we had no idea uh what we might be dealing with in the midst in of the, the public in square the, in the actual public square so yeah. uh we've been hearing from a lot of folks like hey we love the public square we love what y'all are doing that stuff is kind of evergreen stuff it's stuff that we hope you'll be able to utilize as you go forward uh but there's some stuff that you know color commentary usually gets to respond to that's more kind of right now and relevant so yeah we just thought we'd come in for a little bit and just kind of talk a little bit about how we feel about what's going on in the midst of the election particularly now that it's become a race if you will uh <laughs> <laughs> that has a racial component, if you will. Yeah. Uh, as uh, now, uh, Kamala Harris has now become the uh, the candidate for the Democratic Party for sure. So yeah. I thought we just kind of process that. Well, a little before bit. we and, and be- other stuff, I'm sure. Too. I was about yeah. to say before we get into the public square, we need to talk about oh break dancing oh <laughs> in the Olympics. I think we've all seen the break dancing. Everyone's had a chance to cool. That's the public square. Okay. Everyone's had a chance to cool it down. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. All right. So you want to talk about breaking? I. All right. So my 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 thing is, I remember, I remember when we they were like, "Hey, breakdance going to be part of the Olympics." It was a little weird for me at first, and I remember telling my wife, "I'm like, I don't think it's going to work out good because I don't know how you, (laughs) because I don't know how you judge breakdance. Like everything else has like a specific way. Like you know, you do a triple sow cow or whatever that is, or you do a you do a flip or a turn or." There's, there's like, you know, difficulty levels. And so I don't know the rules of the breakdance. And maybe it's just my ignorance. I didn't look it up either. I'm, look, I'm curious, just going around the room here, uh, Pepper Schmevin, <laughs> um, breakdancing. How familiar were you with this breakdancing before breaking? Or be- not breakdancing, breaking as a sport before it was in the Olympics. Yeah, that's it. Like, as a sport? Yeah, as, a as a sport. As a sport. I don't think I'm familiar with it as a sport. Are you still sport. not familiar with it? No, I understand. I know what you're talking about. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But Just is like, it a sport now? It's it's in the Olympics. I know, but it, is it a sport, You're though? getting judged. People win things. Are they athletes? That, okay, I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get in trouble because I'm going to equate breaking to... Oh, here to we go. Don't do it. Cheer. Oh, I knew somebody was going to do it. This, it's the same thing, right? It's like, oh, it, it's so I subjective. Know. Wow. And, and I don't oh, know. Like, no. like, you just said breaking was the same thing. This is so why I, I just made so. everyone mad. The cheerleaders so. are mad. The breakers are he mad. He doesn't even know. I'm just, I that's can't why even, he's Schmevin. That's all right. I, I, look, but what you're articulating is this. There is a, there always is that push between whether cheerleading is a sport. And now you're talking about is breaking a sport. The and there's a. makes sense as a sport to me. Why, so give me the, why does cheerleading make sense in breaking? No. But cheer is not in the Olympics. I know, but I, I uh, <laughs> we kept her mic uh, uh, off on that one. For yeah, sure. cheer is not in the Olympics because black because breaking is a male <laughs> is a male well, sport. I know. I said <laughs> somebody out there was not like in the Olympics because of misogyny. Because there are no men in cheering. <laughs> because the majority are women. In cheer. Are you sure about that? Yes. Have you watched the cheer competition? Majority. I would say majority. Majority. Yeah, it is. A, also, a, I would like everybody to know there is, you can Google all right. um, Olympic breakdancing rules, and there's a whole article I, that you can pull up. Yeah, exactly. They've got they've got a crunch okay i'm not offended i i, I I'll, I'll see my way out thank you very much you thought Marcus. i mean i could pull up a whole article on the rules for monopoly but that doesn't mean wow. that it's going okay. to be what an olympic happened? sport uh, look it's it's got ways in which people are judging it. when you look at gymnastics no well, there is a look there is a subjective objective version well, of all of these let sports. me let me try to explain uh, so right. i'm gonna explain where i'm coming from because right. okay. break dancing like as a street as a as something, that, as something that came from the streets. I'm just put it that way. Why are you saying it's from the streets? You got to say it right. Streets. No, it <laughs> came from this. black people. From, the, from black people. Thank you. But where it came from, yeah. like there wasn't these type of like 
rules around it. It's almost like to add some rules around it is to like take it out of it's the context. context that was in and and to rob it in some way. Like, and so it feels like I don't know. It feels like it loses some of its eth- some of its ethos in the middle of all that. Which, by the way, I only saw a couple of the dancers. Okay. So, but when so you're I was making a comment that's not fully. Um, I agree. Yeah, realized. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, okay. But I only saw a couple. But the but the couple I saw, and it wasn't even the one that's the most famous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but which is couple, a, which was a protest. Ultimately. All right, but yeah. a couple of the ones that I did see were just like, uh, man, it felt like the heart of what breakdancing was wasn't wasn't in there. Like I know people who who break dance better than that. Sure. And and there's some like essence in it that's missing that was missing. And I know it was the first one and sure. But anyway, so anyway, so I, just, I was I do I want to push sure on how, the fact how I'm, I felt I'm, about it. I really want to know who these people are that you know who can break dance better than some of these folks. I I know some people growing up. Okay, all right. Yeah. I thought who, you were like talking right now that no, you know I'm like, people. Like yeah, like people I grew up with. Okay. Who sure. like like yeah, they're they're better now, dancers. Here's what I would say is just to be clear, you uh, did not watch every single one. Okay. I did not watch every single one. I watched a couple and when did you watch? Did you went watch in at with the some early? confirmation bias? Okay, so let's be honest. <laughs> and it was yeah. like, see, I knew it. And knew then it. And, <laughs> and then checked out. And okay. it was like I, and then I saw all the memes and I was further Okay. further uh justified. So you're you're thoughts. ultimately saying that everything we tell people not to do <laughs> As they come to a situation, <laughs> you did it or making judgments. That on. is what I did. Okay, man. I just want to be honest, and that we're here with that. I also came in with judgments, and then I watched. I watched the finals, right? Okay. Particularly, I watched the ladies' finals and the men's finals. Maybe that's what I should have did. And uh, I was really, I was really excited about it, and I really was, I was, I was proud of it, if mm. I can say it like that. Yes, it took off the streets, but then I started thinking like e- everything came off the streets at some point. Mm-hmm. Right, like basketball, golf, uh, gymnastics, uh, even dance that, that people are engaging in, figure skate, like they came off the street. Somebody was doing that somewhere and they were just free flowing on it. And then they were like, you know what we need to do is we need to create some sort of competition out of this thing. And so I would have never, and, and here's what the thing is, is break dancing has always been a competition, right? True. It's always been where people are like, I'm the best, I'm the best. Of and course. so what yeah. now you have is, okay, well, let's create some some parameters to really determine who is the best break dancer. Yeah. Right? Let's put some 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 seal. I think that's the way it always works. But who put the qualifications as now, it? that's an that's a, a, an excellent question. But here's what I loved about what whenever I watched the breaking during the Olympics, it was every five minutes they were reminding the audience that it came out of Brooklyn from these these ultimately these these and I'm not even rappers, it's it's these it's these DJs that took yeah. the music that was going on in the time, particularly in the late seventies, and they took the break part of that music and they started stringing those together to create really the the foundations of hip hop. Right? Uh, they were creating their own sound machines and stuff off of just spare parts that were thrown out in the midst of this dilapidated area of Brooklyn, and then throwing house parties where people would come in and they would dance to the music, and then they were creating all these moves and whatnot, and ultimately turned into the cardboard on the ground and people spinning on their heads, and I used to do it as a kid. And for me, I found a lot of pride to know that um, as, a, as a member of the black community, particularly the black community that, that, is, that comes from the ancestors that were in America all the way back for hundreds of years, that, that a people that went through what we went through made up this style out of just, just disparate pieces of parts in garbage cans, uh, started putting in some of the, the flair and the part of our community together, and now it's an Olympic sport for people. I was yeah. really proud in that moment. Yeah. I mean, I'm coming from the same place of pride. Yeah, sure. And worried that the Olympic designation robs it yeah. a little bit. Like, to me, it, I'm worried that you'll lose some of that with uh, a more sanitized Olympic breakdance experience that doesn't truly honor like what that really is. And I think that's my concern. So it like, I, I'm, yeah. I feel the same way. Like I see the journey of it yeah. and there's a part of me is like, man, I want that story to have, I want it to have the impact it should have. And I'm just hoping that the Olympic games and games of it and everything that comes with that doesn't somehow sanitize that story or sanitize right. the, the, the heart behind um, what, what that part of our culture is. Yeah. I, I, I think that's always the fear of cross-cultural interaction at all, all times, right? When I think about revelation seven, nine and just the all tribes, sons and nations, 
in that throne room worshiping God, the question, it begs the question, like worshiping how, right? Like whose style gets pushed forward? And then if the style is whatever it is, it's not the style of any particular group. So there, there's probably some version of or something that they're pulling from a particular group that's now adding to this style that they're doing in heaven, if you will. And it doesn't feel uh, pure to the particular culture, right? And that's where I, you know, I think there's this this move that we're pushing for, even in the work that we're doing here in Threaded, is that there is a there is a part of um, our ethnocentrism and desire to keep our fullness of culture that is very wonderful and, and exciting. But there's also a recognition that uh, the beauty of the culture is when it's shared. Um, you know, emulation is the, the best form of flattery. Like I know some people call it appropriation and sometimes it is particularly if they don't know where it comes from or if they're stealing it, if they're calling it theirs, but if they're seeing it and they're emulating it, uh, that's, uh, even historic times beyond just our own, you know, contemporary culture. Um, the emulation was, was it to be expected? So, um, so, you know what I mean? so if you were to see, and we're going to get off of this, well, we're just talking, we're just processing. I know, but, but there's a part of me that, that imagines, and and I'm surprised in myself, honestly, that I'm like possessive about <laughs> about breakdancing because I like <laughs> I was, should, I've got the floor here. I, you should I did, show what I, you no, can do I, here, I, and it well, might it might make sense once we see you're you do seeing it right now. What I can do that's this, it. That's this, this is that's the best you're gonna get. No, but I but I'm worried. Like I would see in the future where like whatever the varying sets of countries come, and the representation of hip hop is not black people doing it. Sure. And it's just a technical. It's just technically. It's technically break dancing. Yeah. But the heart of it is missing. So you, you know the story yeah. that the natural. Yeah. The natural. You know what I mean? Like the natural essence, and I, that's what I mean by the sanitize. I'm worried about that sanitization, and it feels dishonoring in some ways. If we were to end up in that, and I guess I just don't trust the Olympics to be. And then it's kind of weird to think that somebody's going to get a gold medal for break dancing when. There's probably people who can break dance better than them. Well, look, who who, what, who can't get yeah, to the Olympics? I think you what you're talking about, like, look at basketball. I mean, who who dominates basketball right now? African Americans. We didn't create that sport. So and remember, before there was a point in time where in America they wouldn't let us play because they didn't think we had the the intellectual ability to be able to play the sport. Yeah. And here we are, ultimately dominating. Most people, if you told them that black people didn't create basketball, they're like, "What?" Right? So say what? Say what? Right? So I think, I think that's what happens when I think the creation of things by cultures has to be done in such a way that it's for the world, uh, as opposed to just for themselves. Yeah, but it just, I just, want I know protect, what you're, yeah, I know. Protect, we just protect the heart of it. I, I believe the, yeah, I mean, I, look, whoever created basketball is probably sitting around going, like, oh, where's the heart of this thing? Well, you know, they, <laughs> they, they don't, they're not playing it the they're right way. The right way. Say. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's so, supposed to be fluid and yeah. not all this dunking. <laughs> I guess, I guess you're right. I mean, if I look at it in that way, it I, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Uh, I, my, my initial, my initial, my initial fear, I guess, uh, around that is, yeah. Is that it would just become this thing that's I think it's that a, we would lose the whole story of I it. Think, I, think it I, I think I think it absolutely I think I here's I, here's what my my cards on the table. I have that fear as well. And I think it's because I'm so close to it, right? Because it was created in my time. True. Right. Maybe I don't that's it too. Yeah. You know well, what I mean? I like, grew up around it even if I didn't I, yeah, do it. Why, yeah. and, and it was <laughs> and we were harassed for it, right? Like it wasn't looked at something valuable enough. To yeah. put, you know, scores around, and now all of a sudden it's in the Olympics, and people are memeing it, and you're like, hey, this was something that people thought was a low, a low art form at some level, yeah. right? So it might be because we're close to it. Maybe it's well, that's good though. I think it's it's a good convo. I think uh, I think yeah. the processing of it was healthy for yeah. me. I, I needed to process. You need to process. Let's get it done. And, and we need more processing. I mean, we've got we've got more than just the Olympics to process. Okay, we, yeah, we got we, some other we've stuff. got we've got an election that we're There's in. There's a guy named still. Joe Biden. He kind of decided he, that he was done. He decided he was done. He so, he gave he he willingly <laughs> gave up power. Okay, let's talk about that for a second. Okay, uh, so, willingly, <laughs> it's, it's, willingly, it's, willingly. Yeah, well, willingly. well, we are talking about these are things that we're in. Yeah. Um, no. It, no agenda. Just right. Right. No. Processing. No political agenda. Yeah. Just. Just processing about dynamics around the situation. I think it's really interesting how big a deal it is being made that he, that he gave away power uh, by by which party, whoever. Okay. Whoever saying it, and whoever whoever uh, whoever is a f uh, whoever for whomever that dynamic means something to. 
right? Like, um, it may not. Yeah, I, the 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 Democratic Party is hyping it up, of course. But hyping I, it up as a as a thing to be as a thing a, to be proud of, proud of to yeah. honor, uh-huh, and to, yeah. But I think it still has an effect on anyone, whether okay. Democrat or not. It may not have the effect that they like want to change their vote or whatever. But I think it's a note is noteworthy for people to be like, man, somebody gave away their power, you know, an opportunity. They they laid down power. I think that's an interesting dynamic that that is such a such an um, an honorable thing to do. And I think it says something about our expectation about uh-huh. our nation, about power and about how how important it is. And I just think it's an interesting thing. I, there's a part of me that's like, okay, he made a he made a he made a decision. It was probably the right decision. He calculated, and okay, I don't know that I'm ready to give Joe Biden a whole lot of extra cookies uh-huh. for laying down power. I I would give him the cookies just because that seems to be the right decision to make, whether it was about power or not, sure. you know. But the power dynamic seems to seems to really play into it, and I just think it's an interesting commentary well, on our modern moment. Well, and I wonder I wonder if it has anything to do in light of uh, particularly against the backdrop of 2020 where power was not laid down right where where power was like it wasn't 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 given up there wasn't a a a transition a peaceful transition of power there was an individual who's like i'm i don't even believe i'm supposed to give this up i'm still in power and so i think if i'm a democrat i would say I would hype it up to create the contrast, the contrast right. in the conversation and in the political. Um, so, are you saying manner. that if we didn't have that that backdrop, that maybe I, maybe the decision has a little? I less, don't know if it would. Um, I don't know if it would be um, shouted from the rooftops like it is right now, because mm-hmm. I think it presents a a, 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 a a juxtapositional a dichotomy that they're trying to help the the middle Americans who the undecided draw, as they're looking, they're going, hey, this you've got this one. I'm not even going to say party. I'm going to say this one person who doesn't lay down power. And then you've got this one person inside of this party uh, that does. Right. And this person was the one who hired the person who's now our candidate. Right. So I think they're trying to make that so that those in the middle, if they're sitting there going, okay, but which one is, is mirroring certain values that I think are, or whatever that are, that are honorable that they would go, Oh, that is a good point. You know what I mean? So, it, it, to me, it's a good political strategy. Don't, don't sure. you think that we're seeing that? Like, you're saying if it wasn't for the 2020 backdrop, sure. that it wouldn't be a big deal. But not like, as big a deal. I, I just don't know if they'd be making such a big deal. About I mean, it. I just think it's it's extremely countercultural. Yeah. Like when you look around at the rest of our society, like we don't see people voluntarily giving up power. Yeah, that's like, fair. once they get it, they're like, now that I have it, I'm going to hold on to this and do everything I ever wanted to do. Yeah, and it's not just in political areas. I mean, we we see it in business world. We see it. We see in, in churches, in churches. You know, yeah, yeah, we see it, and so it, I, I think it's it still stands out yeah. because it, it's just not the norm, right? Well, uh, that's the thing; it yeah. stands out, and yeah. and that's that's the commentary. I mean, maybe maybe we would have. It's not a news flash to us, but it just it was extraordinarily mm-hmm. poignant, I guess, um, to me in this that wow, our community really embraces power to the degree that if anyone uh-huh. gives it up, yeah. It is such a big deal, <laughs> you know. And of course, this is like the leader of the free world, yeah. right? So this uh, he, enormous amount of power, but it's just that power has that has that allure to it, mm-hmm. you know, in our society. And we 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 really are, um, you know, we really are surprised yeah. that people would make a right and good decision. I think almost we all catalog, of us we would categorize it as a right and good yeah, decision. like almost all of us would look at this decision and and follow the logic. So it's not like extraordinarily brilliant, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's not like a brilliant, like oh my gosh, he saw something none of us saw. Like no, we all kind of most people are like, yeah, you made that decision. We we follow that. Yeah. So it's not like it's brilliant, but what's brilliant about it is this sacrificial power thing Uh and and i don't know it just feels like which which i again if we think about it very you know uh biblically right if we want uh, as well historically biblically too that was the big aspect of jesus right yeah this idea of 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 emptying yourself this kenosis right (laughs) we're not calling biden jesus yeah exactly right but but the idea of someone sacrificing power uh, models something uh, or, or a way in which Jesus demonstrated his his own sort of 
uh, engagement in incarnation and form is not only did he give up his power ultimately as uh, as this as, as God, if you will. Not, I know it's not. I know yeah, it's not yeah. fully thinking you're right, but he's, he's emptied he's, himself. He's emptying himself, right? Yeah, he didn't see as, equality with God. Something to be grasped and utilized. Emptied himself, right? right. Not, not only did he do says. that. Yeah, exactly. Not only did he do that in front in terms of his divinity, but even when he came to society, uh, he didn't he didn't incarnate into a powerful position. Yeah, he incarnated into the, the in, in many ways the very marginalized version of yeah. humanity. Yeah. So we got that, and obviously, even that that power change has thrown people for a loop, right? I think now, and here we are with this with this new sort of candidate thing that is up there. And I think yeah. part of the reason we're talking about it is because it has this racial construct or thing yeah. that's at play that we weren't anticipating yeah. uh, at all. So, I, so how are you processing that? How are you processing sort of you know bringing in Kamala Harris and, and what that what what how people are describing that and what that means mm. uh, to some extent? So I see two things. One has nothing to do with Kamala and it has to do with the fact that people in America need it. A, 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 there's a large block of people in America who really needed something to believe in and were waiting on it. And a decision was made that seemed to activate, activate that. Uh -huh. Right. So just for a second, if we take the people out of it and just look at the dynamics of like leadership and the, and the consequence of decision-making at leadership levels, yeah. Uh, there's something about making the decision that Biden made that activated a bunch of people who I think were waiting to be activated, but okay. just didn't have the thing that they, they weren't needed. motivated. They didn't believe enough in it. Right. Yeah. But they are so on the tip. Like yeah. they're so ready that, that they're like, you know, once he, once he decided, okay, I'm out. There's a part of me that feels like whoever he put in, as long as that person felt like they were a winnable candidate like a uh, solid candidate that there were people who were ready to rally behind something they believe could actually work yeah right and so right now kamala's name is on that and then she does bring some stuff that we'll bring to that i'll talk about it in a minute but but on the, just just taking the people out of it there seems to be just like america is starving for something they can believe in mm -hmm. something they, they think would actually work yeah something they could actually believe in provides hope uh, and a light in this dark tunnel that many of us believe that we are in uh politically as an american citizen as, as an Ameri Christians. as an american citizen yeah. plus, I mean, yeah. politically yeah, yeah. Uh, and and, and listen, this want to make sure right and so this decision ignited a bunch of people to that end i think and i think again just speaking to the dynamics uh that was really interesting to me to try to interpret like the, the 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 and to take lessons from as a leader to say hey um sometimes you have to make a really tough decision that might be at the cost of self yeah in order to activate the movement or the mission yeah. and to get get yourself out of the way and it's an example of sometimes people are just waiting for you to do that everybody knows <laughs> it's what is what needs to happen you're yeah. the but you're yeah. the person you're yeah. the you're the brakes you're the you're the stopgap you are in the way of yeah. the movement and sometimes stepping out, just just stepping out, just just lets this energy and this wave of um of 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 uh you know dynamic energy flow. And I, I think I saw that rather I saw that, you know, and that was really interesting. And then you can speak on that if you want, and then uh, where Kamala's concerned, um I there, there's the part of me that's like, man. I think it's really interesting uh, that she brings a series of uh, dynamics that help bring people who were maybe checked out of the process into the process. Yeah. Black woman, Indian, you know, all the identity places. Uh, but man, there is a part of me that wishes that she could have ran and had a longer ramp. It, it may be beneficial to her that she has a shorter ramp, but um, I you know I don't want it to ever come back on her as an asterisk mm -hmm. that well this was given to you, uh -huh. not that you you didn't earn it you know from two years out like the rest of us had to had to talk and be subjected to criticism and yeah. all those things and so there is the there's a small piece of me that's like um you know as a black person growing up I'm always worried about 
someone coming with some illegitimacy claim. Yeah, sure. To say, hey, you really don't deserve that. Uh huh. You know, even if you do, you like you really so that so that piece in my head is is activating for her to say someone can come and try to come at her and say, You didn't really earn this prejudice. We kinda had to do what we had to do. We were push came to shove. You was the, this was a break glass for emergency a moment. You happened to be the axe in the glass and so we pulled you out and then and we went with it. And um and so I would I, I don't want that for for her story if this is what she's going to if she's going to become our president. So there's that part. Yeah. And then the last piece is You got a lot you just unpacking here. I know, but a, the last little bit is it's just that um yeah, I guess I should stop. I'll let you I'll stop and I'll let you. Yeah, cuz there's a lot going on in that space yeah. that you did. So processing the same things. Um what I would say is I I'm curious if the change I'm curious if change itself is actually the inspiration for activity because I, 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 I want to say that the change in the energy that was associated with the change was connected primarily to the person of Kamala. Right. I do think that, yeah, if you had changed, I think you could probably make a case for if they had changed from Biden to a, a younger uh, white dude, you probably would have gotten some activation for sure. But I think they still would have been sitting there going, I feel like this is the same thing that we've been getting for a while. I mean, other than obviously 2008 and, and uh, that, that place with Obama. Um, I, I do think that, that, that she represents something that is, again, kind of underneath that's been kind of, that's been kind of spurring. We see in all other areas of society that there's this, there's this growth in the representation of people of color. There's this growth in the representation of women. And yet when we get up to this place, we're still left. Like, I think we were all sitting about going, Oh, it really is really all we're left with is, uh, you know, uh, basically 80 year old white men. These are the best. This, we got. this is the, that was the question. The best we got now, again, some people will go, you think Kamala's the best we got. Here's the thing is I, I know that she's at least representing a differentiation of some potential best we've got, right? At least there's a differentiation of it. Uh, and so I think that's what, that's what, inspired a lot of folks and i think there's a lot in her story that really hits to so many aspects of where america is headed and where it is even now that really animates people right um you know and I, i've said it again when we were talking about this but, in two, uh, um when we were talking about this in 2020 i was the first one to, to, to tell you i said it on this microphone not this microphone but a microphone that that kamala harris is she's 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 carrying a couple of things with her that they that I think they weren't making use of when they first when she first hit the scene. They were just putting her in the in the place of black, right? And you've you've heard uh, Trump. He's like, I don't know, is she black? Is she is she Indian? She used to be Indian. Now she's like, right? Like she's all of that. Like you can have multiple races in your in your body, right? And she represents this South Indian. She represents this uh, this uh, uh, Jamaican, this Caribbean, this black uh, version. She's obviously coming out of Howard, uh, so she's she's really connected with HBCUs like that. How many presidents you know started at an HBCU and made their way to the point where they can get into this place? So I think it's just so much around her story. And what I'll say to your to the place of where that fear, because I have that fear too of like, uh, you know, is it credible? Is there an asterisk? Um, the the people voted for her four years ago. Right, yeah. it, like you're looking at Joe Biden, and you're like, okay, if Joe Biden goes down, Kamala's who's she's up, right? So if we're gonna put an asterisk on Kamala, you got to put an asterisk on LBJ, right? Sure, you know. So, but LBJ, I mean, he's he's the one who put in the, the civil rights. He he furthered the yeah. civil rights movement. Like he's, yeah. he did a lot. Um, I do think one of the things that I think is really interesting though about the way that that Kamala is in it and what it how it's, how it has affected if I as I watch. The Democratic National Convention and and I, when I watched the Republican National Convention, two things I noticed were, were really the things I noticed were really different is we had multiple months in the Republican primaries of these people who were up for the job, right? Who nobody had voted for, they weren't in the office uh, except obviously Trump had been there, but he never showed up at any of the debates. They were debating and telling each other and telling the American people why the other people were terrible, yeah, why they were terrible versions, why they shouldn't be the president, so on and so forth. All of a sudden, you get to the the Republican National Convention, and all of their on stage telling you how awesome Donald Trump is, and all that, and and it's like you see the hypocrisy on stage, mm. and now and so now the American people, although they know that that's kind of how it plays, they know that it's a political game that they're watching, and they're having to deal with that as they're watching, like oh, it's a political game. The 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 benefit that I see as I watch the as I saw the Democratic National Convention is we know that there was jockeying behind the the scenes. We know that there's other people who wanted to be there and whatnot. 
the reason they chose and one of the great reasons they could choose Kamala is because the American people had already voted for her four years ago. And so it wasn't like you needed to do primaries. Is she available? Is she going to be good enough? No, they already voted for her. And when they voted for Biden, they were voting for her again because they knew Biden's 84 years old. He's going to die. She might be the one. They didn't see anybody jockeying underneath. So now when people stand up, the the, the Newsoms and the um, the brother from uh, 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 Pennsylvania, who I can't remember his name all of a sudden, um, when they hear them say good things about her, they are more inclined to believe it because they haven't heard, actually heard anything uh, in primary debates about how terrible a candidate she would be. Yeah. So it created a, it's created a really interesting thing uh, in the two parties as the American people have to watch the parties deal with the candidate that they have now chosen or been left with. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. I don't know. So but that's the benefit yeah. of, of her coming in I, I think this it's, late. I think it's been really energizing and uh, consolidating and unifying for the Democratic Party who were on the ropes at that debate when Joe Biden was there. They were like, we are on the ropes here. Yeah, and it somehow was, they have turned it, it completely upside down. And I think part of it is because they didn't have to do, they didn't need to do a primary where people were yelling at each other and, and, and talking yeah. bad. They just went, no, we're all in on this yeah. because it's different and it's new. But if it feels a year ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It would have been a completely different. It would have right, been completely we, we different. We might have had a couple Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. Know, and yeah. we might have had a. A, d- a debate or two. Well, and Ant- you know? Antoine, you're worried about the the asterisk, like, but uh, like, like, uh, like Marcus said, you know, you look at LBJ and what he was able to accomplish. I think she might be set up to accomplish more because she didn't have to go through the wounding process of a primary, um, which says something just yeah, about how our how our government's set up. Yeah. Like, which is, it's not anything about either party because both parties have been they guilty have of it, it. Yeah. you know, through, throughout time. But but she's set up in a stronger position because she hasn't necessarily had to compromise or fight some of those battles. Um, but the other thing I was going to say, uh, Antoine, you were talking about how when she, when, when they made the decision to, to make a change, how people were just so excited and and you just see people hungry for it. Um, to me, uh, that's a kind of an indictment on the fact that like the world is hungry for some hope. They're looking yeah, right now, right. going there is nothing hopeful out here mm-hmm. yeah and and what does that say about us as believers yeah, and what, as the church kind of like why are, are they why are they not finding hope from us they're right. having to look for hope from our politics yeah i think it's well said that's kind of what that's kind of that's kind of part of the landscape there like yeah. the fact that that energy is sitting there it makes you wonder like man if if people are, are activated to the degree that they're going to give millions of dollars yeah you know, in a couple of days, they're going to rally toward, you know, this group for Kamala, this group for Kamala. Uh, then what would, um, man, the church doesn't have that kind of energy. Well, and you know, what's what's hard about it, too. Oh, were you trying to come in? I do have something yeah, to go say. for it. Yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, I think, too, um, Kevin just said that everybody's looking for hope. We want something to hope for. But then on the flip side of that, we're seeing how the Republican Party is... Um, beating each other up and is kind of not stirring hope in people. And they, a lot of people associate yeah. Republican with Christian. Right. And so it's just another terrible thing on the name of Jesus to go look, look at these, look at these Christians because yeah. it's almost synonymous yeah. in some ways. And so it's just, it's just sad. Yeah. It's the, it, it, it begs us to, it, it should create a sense where we, <laughs> it may be too late, but a separation again, separating our our christianity from a a christendom mindset which is to be associated with a particular political party it 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 is it is absolutely one of the reasons why that that sort of association becomes dangerous because because here's what's happening right you're saying it you're saying it too pep um when you watch uh, and look i've watched i watched the rnc dnc when i watch the dnc what's the message that they're saying choose joy over hate or, or over bitterness and it's hope over fear absolutely and yet who are the people to your point Pep, who are the ones who are the ones associated with bitterness and with fear and with hate it's this it's the people who follow after donald trump this is this is the democrats articulation this is how they're choosing to ju- to juxtapose the messages joy versus versus bitterness and to your point pepper like the christians are the ones who are more closely and associated in our American society in with reputation, yeah, reputation with that that Republican yeah, party, and that's the danger. Like the the danger is that the branding of Christianity is too closely has become too close to line. And that's not to say you can't be a Christian and vote Republican, right? We're, we're talking about the 
the branding the branding of the two and how connected those two things are and that is what creates this vacuum of hope uh or or gives people this dichotomy of this or that with christianity not in the middle of all of that you know for for so many people um yeah i i that's that's what i was what what kevin was talking about is what i was thinking through like there is this starving crowd of people who yeah. want something to believe in. Yeah, yeah. And we they found something for a second to do that with, yeah. but it does say something about, man, all of us, all these churches in America who are, who our our brand is hope and love. Should be. It, it uh, like yeah. I I say our brand. Yeah. No, I think like that's right. our message. Yeah. Our message is hope and love and and community and society. At least it ought to be. Yeah, and it should say something about how we're doing church uh-huh. in America that people are so starved. Yeah, you know, imagine a place being a, a city being uh, you know people being starved while sitting in a restaurant with a buffet table right in front of them. Uh-huh. Like why you say why are you hungry? There's food right there and there's something about that food, food that you feel is I'd rather I'd, I'd rather, rather be hungry eat, yeah. uh-huh. than eat that food, right? right? And so something about what we're sure. doing is so distasteful for that analogy that they don't think that's actually something that they're are going to win with. Yeah. You know, they're going to lose with that. And they're looking for something else. Right. And I I, I think if we could get away from the political like piece of it and just kind of look at the dynamics of like again leadership and decision making and the toughness of making decisions, yeah, right. Uh, the sense of not again, it was a I'm gonna make a decision for the for the crowd instead of for me, man. But the church doesn't get that. Uh-huh. Most people don't think about that way when they right. think about churches. They think the church is trying to build its own kingdom and right. become a mega church and. You know, do its own thing. It's no secret that churches are competitive. You know, I used to yep. do this all the time. If I stand in front, in, in front of a crowd of people and say, hey, how many of you think the church is competitive? Almost every hand gets raised. Right. How many of you think it's easy for the churches to collaborate? No hands go up. Like These are normal things that people believe about us. And these are spaces that reveal that. Yeah. And, and if we don't, if we could miss that evaluation, we could miss that analysis for you know, for the forest of the, of the, pol- of the politics. Yeah. Golly. It's, it's such a great, it, it's hard to talk about it without being political, but I'm going to try. No, I'm not. I'm just going to talk about it. And you can say what you want about the political piece is again, everything that you just mentioned, um, the fear, I, I keep thinking about the messages when people create marketing, when they create branding, they particularly in the competition, like a, an election, they're trying to differentiate themselves from the other party. And when I watch the DNC, I keep hearing joy. I hear about Kamala. I hear she's for the people. She's not for herself. Right? right. It's not about I. It's about we. It's not about me. It's about, hey, the reason Joe Biden is great is because he could have held on to power, but but he didn't. He gave up power, which is the opposite of what his his opponent would do. And again, every one of those things now is right. associated with Christianity. Yeah, because that's where it lives. Now, here's what I'll, I'll I'm going to give a caveat here, right? Because what I would say is, anyone who's listening, like I don't, I, 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 I don't, I don't claim that Christianity. Which one? The 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 <laughs> <laughs> the joy and the hope. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no, the other one. I don't claim it. I don't think it is. You don't claim the fear. Is that no, what you're saying? Yeah, I don't claim it. I here's and I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna say it in very racial terms. Okay, yeah, say what I you think, mean, because I'm not yeah, following. All right, I'm gonna say it in very yet. racial terms. The 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 Christianity that mostly is engaged in that sort of Republican space as rec- recognized by the data is white Christians. Right? Eighty eight or eighty percent of folks of white Christians voted for Trump, you know, whenever it was, right? They are in the maneuvering the in the uh, Republican Party and Look, and there's lots of good reasons why they engage in that Republican Party. There's some really great things over the Republican Party. I think historically has been in the Republican Party. This new version, if you will, yeah. uh, I don't think represents well uh, where where I think many Christians were were trying to get connected to the Republican Party in the history, right? So I'll say it like that. But those who are still in, those who are still beating the drum for this move, uh, the it, it, the Republican Party represents all those things that I just mentioned, right, in the sense of bitterness and fear and uh, uh, I, me, those kinds of things. And those are not 
I, I don't claim that Christianity. I don't think that that is real Christianity. I think that's, I've said it a couple times now, I think that's Christendom. I think that's empire Christianity. I think that's Constantine and beyond Christianity. I think that's white supremacist Christianity. I I don't believe that is the true nature of who Christianity is. Right. I think Christianity has been demonstrated to us in the scriptures that's different. Again, pre-Constantine, I think Jesus, what he shows us about witness uh, as opposed to building a nation, right? He, he talks about witness and witness to Judea and Samaritan and the earth, how we do that. He shows us sacrifice. He shows us uh, a kind of Christianity that's not triumphal, uh, a, a kind of Christianity that that self-sacrifices and that expects to have to sacrifice. Right. Uh, and I think the black church inside of this, uh, of this country has also demonstrated a pure version of Christianity in its genesis, a pure version of Christianity um, because they brought it from the margins, which is where Jesus is located, right? And so this Christianity that we're seeing who 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 puts their stamp of approval on these types of things that we're seeing from, I, I would say, the Republican Party, uh, particularly those things where it's it's generating around fear, it's, um, you know, calling people names, it's um, constantly, um, you know, trying to take and, and lord over Christian ideals, lord over people, that's Christendom. That's not Christianity. That's Christian dumb. And so I, I am choosing to to try to live into Christianity and separating myself from that. And not to say that the that the Democratic Party is 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 doing that. But what I at least know is that the concepts of joy and hope uh, and freedom and for the people these sound way more like the the versions of Christianity uh, than um, than what we're hearing from the other side. Yeah. 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 I, I think that I just think there's a third option, a, a third viewpoint. Not, and I'm not disagreeing with you, I no. think, but uh, I think there's the, uh, you know, the problem we have had, the problem we've made, and it's the whole reason politics became on my radar, as I said many times in our shows years ago, was that people started putting Christian in the Republican branding. Yeah. And that made me, even if I was, conservative leaning in those time periods that made me nervous because I know that the the goal of the Republican or the Democrat party isn't the kingdom of God right that's not the goal of those parties so when when you try to put Christian on either one of them it's just not going to be good enough right it's not going to work for you right so so it happens that Republicans are trying to co-opt that that as part of their brand and that has always made me nervous for Christians mm -hmm. regardless of how I voted. Right. And I, and I want to draw the, the distinct, the line for me anyway here, because it's possible, I believe to be a Christian in the way we're talking about the pure Christ like uh, Christian and potentially still vote Republican based on what you understand in your convictions. The problem is that the messaging and the branding right. and the way that it's being communicated and trying to bring those two things together is really what's complicating, it's complicating the, the whole entire thing. thing. And I just wish that we could take the Christian name and brand off completely of out of either one of the things. We are Christians. We live in a context where we do need to vote. And so we we vote based based on our Based on based on our faith and our convictions, and Christian Christianity plays a role in that. Uh, but neither one of these parties, you know, I believe uh, Christians should be looking at both of these parties and saying, "Hey, you, Jesus is hey, it's either perfect or it's sin. That's what it's always been. Mm -hmm. it, you, I give you the law. If you break one bit of the law, then it ain't me, right? Right? And so it's got to be that same way with these with these other." Um, two things and it feels really nervous. And so someone could be listening to this podcast and it could sound like we're like, Hey, vote Democrat. That's not what we're saying. That's not what I'm saying. I don't no. know if that's what you're saying either. Well, I think what we're both lamenting yeah. is that the witness of the church yes. is somehow tied yes. in with one of these parties. Right. And we want to wrestle away the witness of the church while also protecting your ability to vote in this two party system exactly. have a way it makes sense. They just don't get to use Christ. That's as their as as their as their uh political um marketing scheme. Right. And it seems that that's the way it's being used. Right. And in that sense it's the use my name in vain. Yes. 
but you are, know, but aren't and, they and my name for vanity? They're using they're using Christ as part of their marketing scheme because the voice of the church, the pastors, are lending their voice to the political realm. And yeah. so, like, we have pastors lending their voice to a party or to a leader to endorse or to stand behind. And so now the two the two the two different things are are blended together when they like like Antoine's saying they should be completely separate because you could be a Christian Republican or a Christian Democrat because Democrat or Republican has nothing to do with Christianity. Yeah, well now you're talking about the historicity of just the conversation, right? Like that that just goes back nineteen nineties contract of America where uh, really evangelical particularly churches are making this contract with the Republican Party about bringing their their network and their power and their resources to the Republican Party if the Republican Party promises to to take care of some of the things that they're really passionate about, right? It's it's about um, yep. lobbying, if you will. Yeah, uh, it's you know what I mean. Clear pro quo is clear pro quo lobbying. Interest convergence. Everywhere. Absolutely, I, yeah. I, we're lobbying. You, I want you to do these certain things with our, with your politics and with policies that are going to protect us, right? And, and there's going to be a show that we're going to be coming out with with Christianity in the public square that talks about this idea and really kind of leans in on this idea of in the lobbying space. There's nothing really wrong with that, but it's about the. I, to demonstrate it, I think the way Jesus would do it is you're lobbying for the good of others uh, as opposed to coming to the table and saying, I'm lobbying for the good of myself, which is where I think we went awry uh, from a Christian standpoint when they attached themselves to the Republican Party in the 90s. Is it, was, it was about protecting the, protecting our own interests, uh, which whenever you get to that point where you're protecting your own interests, you, you, you might find yourself in a situation where you now are uh, uh, locked into some kind of deal. Uh, because your interests are so closely tied into that. Yeah. Um, now, just to kind of finish it up, I, I know we got time and all that stuff, or we're getting close, but I, I know people are curious about the racial concept. Conflict, yeah. Because yeah, that's that's kind of the place that we really play in quite a bit. Uh, and and what we have seen is, obviously, now we've got this, this person of color who's there, and we've got uh, a, a, an older white male in here again, right? So uh, how are you processing that piece of of seeing this, this cultural? Thing? Well, for these two candidates, candidates Particularly, uh, I can imagine for a, for a group of people <laughs> in, in 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 America, um, I can see where for them it would be. Um, how do I say this? Uh, a, a a sweet irony that it would be a black woman that beats a candidate who's known for being derogatory to, to black, black people black, black, and yeah. women, yeah, you know? <laughs> and so I, sure. for, 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 so I could see where, to your point where you say Kamala, there's something about her that might be her specifically. Uh -huh. I think there's a lot, she represents a lot of um, perceived victims of Donald Trump that um, if she were to win this election, um, they would feel some vindication mm -hmm. that they beat the big bad wolf, yeah. you know? Um, and I can see that as something that could truly be galvanizing because of the story and narratives around Donald Trump perceived or real. Right. Right. And um, so I could see just, yeah, you know, just looking objectively at dynamics and people and stories and what people are dealing with. Um, that could be something that really, so that's, that's, that's a dynamic that I see. Um, and then, uh, uh, on a, on a less Donald Trump, uh, centric, uh, view it's, it's, I would be, I'm just, if she becomes president, I will, I'm just very curious and, uh, to see what, what she does. Like, like, let's, <laughs> let's, let's see what she does. I, I do think, uh, um, I, I do think that president Obama was one of our better presidents. Um, and, and I think he surprised a lot of people, uh, in some good ways. Uh, and then he let some people down. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think anyone thought he would he would perform the way he did. They thought he would fail. A lot of people did. Sure. And she may be coming in with a similar kind of expectation from a good bit of people around the country. And uh, some people are going to say she failed regardless of what right. she does. As they said about Obama as well. Yeah. But, um, but she does certainly have an opportunity to step into history uh, with the identity part of the politics. Right. Uh, to to make a mark and a name um, for herself, and especially in a time when there's so much to fix, to fix and to work on. Yeah. So she's got a really good opportunity to represent. Yeah. Uh, multiple, um, you know, a really a good picture of what America is becoming as a immigrated mixed yeah. nation. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that um, mestizaje, that mixedness. You know. So uh, I will say this about her: we we 
we sh- she gave her a talk recently, but we really hadn't heard. Uh, you know, I'm still listening for yeah. for everything that she believes in. So, right. so I don't know what I don't know what I think about her policies yet fully. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and so you know, still TBD. Yeah, yeah. But, I, I, I want to put a I want to put a book in on the conversation we were just having because you mentioned Obama and when I was watching the. the when I was watching his speech at the the DNC, he, he he had a really poignant phrase in there. Um, you know, we talk about this idea that as you go into this racial conversation, that you got to bring, you got to extend grace in the midst of it, right? That's one of our values: grace extending, professional conversations, She's grace human. extending, yeah. right? But one of the things that he said is, he goes, "Look, this is this is as he's talking to the the Democrats out there. First of all, they started to boo at one point. He's like, don't boo, vote,' which I thought was really great. I was like, yes." That's a positive way. Don't 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 bring, don't bring the negative energy. Take that energy and put it into voting. But then at the same time, he was like, "Look, when your grandparents say something really cringy, right? You you don't cut them off. You you shouldn't cut them off because you have to understand that the world is moving very fast. And sometimes people just need a little help or they need a little encouragement to catch up, right? We we should try to extend the same grace to other people as we would want to be you know extended to us." And I was like, man, when have you ever heard a a politician in the midst of this divisive time articulate that? And I think it's a very important piece. And again, a piece that really speaks well to the things we talk about in this race conversation all the time. Now, to process to where I process really Kamala Harris, I think you've mentioned all the things like in her body uh, and in her body of work uh, and in her story. There are so many things that I think people uh, across the country uh, have not seen in their candidates that I think they're really energized about. Yeah. I think it. I think at the surface, you've got a woman, right? Which I think we we had the op- we had the 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 opportunity several years ago through Hillary Clinton. But again, I think there's something that's represented even deeper in Kamala, not just as a woman, but there is a a person of color, right? Um, and this is somebody who represents um, black people because. In a racial society, which you talked about earlier, like her skin color means something in this society, but then she's also got ethnic background. That's all. That's both immigrant, right? Her 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 dad from Jamaica, and then the story that her mom her mom came over here when she's nineteen from India, uh, and 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 ultimately after got being married to her dad for a few years when Kamala was really young, they got divorced and had to raise her and her sister as a single mom, yeah. right? Um, then Kamala goes off to an HBCU, right, uh, a historically black college. Um, she's half Jamaican, half Indian, but she she starts to lean into that identity of black. She's a part of Masal Raz, uh, aka as an alpha. She's a part of a, a fraternity, the, the the female side of the fraternity I'm, I'm connected to. Um, but then she's in the 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 as a litigator, or a prosecutor, right? She's working her way up in the midst of as a prosecutor, fighting for the people. That was her thing that she would say every time she got up in front. She would say, "It's the people. It's not it's not Antoine versus such and such. It's the people versus such and such." Because she recognized and she says. That those, when things happen in a community, it's not the person that does it, but it affects the entire community when things happen. So it's always the people versus somebody who's done something, uh, which I think is a poignant thing that that people don't hear quite a bit. Uh, but then she's um, she's got this uh, singleness for a while. She's only been married now, what, 10 years? Uh, you know, obviously the other side is calling her this cat lady, this single cat lady, you know, whatever, a childless cat lady. Uh, So you got those folks who, you know, who have had trouble having children or don't have children that they're dealing with that as well. Um, I I think that she's just got so much in her body that's that's igniting so many different stories uh, in the environment that it's 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 one of the places that that I think people are able to find a lot of hope and unity. And what she's got going for is the same thing that Barack had is that people like to be a part of a, a big change story. Right. They, they want to look back in history and when their grandparents ask them, hey, did you vote for the first black president that they can go? Yeah, I did. Or did you vote for the first woman president? Yeah, I did. I think a lot of people like that, particularly younger. I think they like that. If even if she's not going to be good, I think they just like that opportunity. Yeah. Uh, and so that's a really interesting thing that we're seeing. Yeah. And again, it juxtaposes if I can use the church in there. It juxtaposes. Um, I think the branding of the church too, right? That again, people are still asking the question, is Christianity a white man's religion? Because the branding of the church is that it's old white dudes leading the church, white people, Christianity, empire, Rome, Western. And yet Christianity, that's Christendom. Christianity is a global, multicultural, multi-ethnic, 
mixed mestizaje Christianity that started back at Christ and immediately became diverse at Pentecost. Right. Got got step even, one. Step one got more diverse at at the Gentile Pentecost with Cornelius. Before that, you had this Africa, this Ethiopian yep. uh, kind of offshoot. Yep. Again, black skin. One of the only times that black skin is mentioned in the Bible, and God is making a very intentional thing to get black people involved in this. And then you got Antioch, the first multicultural church. You got Paul in Ephesians talking about Christ tearing down. Mm-hmm. That that feels like something very Christian going on. And so you have people who are, are resonating with that because I think it's actually a story of Christianity. Mm-hmm. And again, we are not connected to this. We, nobody sees what's going on in the DNC with all that represents in Kamala and all that she means in all those places. The single mom, right? Jesus, Mary, right? Was ultimately, she was a, a pregnant teen, right? Like if she, I mean, that's a different kind of thing. Refugee who had to go live in uh, uh, Egypt, come back and live in the, uh, I mean, I'm just getting off, right? You're getting me going, but we are not associated with that. We are not associated with that kind of diversity. And that is heartbreaking to me. Yeah. Yeah. We're kind of locked into a single, a single, um, a single, single view. Yeah. Uh, and that's what the evangelical quote unquote has become. Yes. Uh, which is a hijacking of the word, by the way. Agree. That's and not, that's not at all what evangelical no. is supposed to mean. Um, and we need to rescue a lot of words. That's a whole nother conversation, a series of conversations. But, um, I don't, this is one of those episodes that you like, man, uh, we, we, we go in and you run right up to the line and I somebody know. gets upset. Um, and so we always have to put these disclaimers out to yeah, say the conversation things. is not about getting you to vote in a direction. That's not what we're doing. I think ultimately what we just did is we're trying to decide we're believers and we can't help but see the needs of the country in, yeah. in how they're responding. Yes. In relationship to the church. Yeah. And the political scene is one of the competing arms of influence to the church. And, um, and we see people animated uh, in those directions. And we're like, man, but why can they, be but, but, but around? they can't, why can't we be, why can't the church have a better influence aside from the politics, right. not trying to do it with and through and, you know, I know. You know, and, and I think that's what we're talking about. So if you listen to this conversation and you got, uh, you got distracted by the fact that we're lamenting uh, the direction of the Republican Party as it relates to the branding and the view of the church. It's not about us saying vote blue or vote red. So that you know, I just, I feel like I feel like it has to be said because these are highly emotional conversations and people just hear what they want to hear. And so that's not what we're saying. We're just talking through the dynamics. Yeah. And a lot of it for me is just people dynamics. It's yeah. just observation and saying, huh, this is what people are responding to. And it helps me understand context, context mm-hmm. of ministry in 2024 as a pastor. Um, and and what do we need to be paying attention to and how people are responding? And where have we missed and where do we need to keep going as a church? You know, as a church, as the church, um, where where is it? And um, so conversations like this are good, and I hope we get to have more of them. But yep. I hope that our audience doesn't feel like we're trying to push them one. No, nah, I, 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 if they, if there's any push I'm making, is the the conversation around witness. Yeah, that's that, what we're. That that's turn, ultimately what we're. That's talking what about. I'm talking about. When Jesus said, "Go be a witness in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth," right? Be uh, ambassadors, right? Ministers of reconciliation, right? All these things in which we're supposed to be. In, in the space and being telling a different story, telling an alternate story that ultimately would woo people to Christ yeah. because Christ's story is a wooing story. Yeah. If they're not being wooed, it's not because the story isn't any good. It's because we're not great messengers of it, right? That's what I'm lamenting. Yeah, um, uh, and I think that's me too. And yeah. you're just looking at the dynamics around Right, that. and what we're seeing is some of yeah. that is being, the lament is happening because it's being revealed in the political space because yeah. Christianity has been tied to yeah. a particular space and not tied to another and so and, and not to I, here's to your point and i don't think it needs to be tied to either yeah but in the fact of the matter is where we live is one has been tied christianity has been tied to one and not the other and the one that is tied to doesn't seem to be one that is a great witness doesn't fully doesn't express the full breath of, yeah. of what christ is yes all the time right and, and 
and the one and who it's not been tied to doesn't express it either. Doesn't express it. But either. in the in the uh, in the public square, if you will, not yeah. to, just to remind people that we have a series called the Christianity Public Square. Mm-hmm. In the public square, in the marketplace, the layperson coming to the conversation, looking at the two, knowing that one has a Christian emblem and one doesn't, they're they're more. They're, I, I I'd be curious. I'll be curious. Which There's one a lot wins. of people who are stepping away from the, uh, from the well, Christian one because yeah. they feel like it's because it's so to, attached to this. With yes. that man, yeah. ah. And the chasm you have to overcome. The overcoming, it's yeah, it's yeah. hard. All right. So well, yeah, great. It. Yeah, hey, just an opportunity to process. I know, um, you know, when we've been in the series Christianity to Public Square, and if you haven't checked that out, obviously, uh, go in and check out some of those episodes. We got more coming to you, but we we may throughout the time because of the dynamics of this uh, election season we're in that we just may process a few things and 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 put them out just regularly for you guys to engage. So um, hey, color commentary, colorful conversations by colorful people about Christianity culture and race give a shout out to mz studios which is now up on our deal here we'll get that figured out in a minute as well uh shmevin in the uh in the booth there and of course pepper thank you for jumping in uh to the convo as well and uh, as always antoine thank you for being yeah. here yeah and you guys thanks yeah, for absolutely. thanks for hanging out with us that's right you guys um, make this uh exciting and fun so hey make sure that you subscribe tell other people about it Put your thoughts in the comments. Uh, who knows? We may bring some of that up into a show later. We know that there's lots of thoughts about this. So go out there, right, and look through those colorful lenses. Make sure you see the world and all the different perspectives. Uh, and as you do that, remember to stay colorful.